It's July in Arizona, and we've been getting a lot of rain. Summer rains tend to bring out the herps, but too much rain can cause us to find nothing but amphibians. During episode two, join me on an adventure to Southern Arizona. Our goal is to find a hognose snake, a green rat snake, or a box turtle. Will we succeed? Let's find out. Herping factoid. The photo to the right shows the scales of what frequently seen Arizona reptile. Is it A, Sonoran gopher snake, B, coach whip, C, western diamondback rattlesnake, or D, sidewinder? Keep watching till the end of the video for the answer. Our herping adventure starts here, driving along a mountain road in southern Arizona. But as you can see, the weather is wet. Too wet. We're here though, so we're gonna stick it out and see what we can find. Our first herp of the evening is this red spotted toad. This is exactly the type of herp that we would expect on a rainy night like tonight. After several unsuccessful passes along our mountain road, we stopped to chat with a group of insect enthusiasts who had set up a tent with lights to attract insects. Southern Arizona is a hot spot because of its high concentrations of diversity of herps, birds, and even insects. Enthusiasts travel for miles from out of state or even from other countries to explore the amazing creatures that we have here in Arizona. Just look at these moths. As well as some gorgeous beetles. The kids even decided to try and fill up my shirt with moths and other insects for the video. A couple hours later, after not having any success herping, we called it a night, set up camp, and went to bed. An hour later, this happened. If there's one thing that you can expect, during the monsoon season in southern Arizona, it's rain. I'm in a tent right now, getting rained on. It's pouring. <laughs> because the force from the rain was causing leaks in our tent and our bedding was getting wet, we decided it was best to pack up and start driving to our next hunting spot where we were planning on searching for box turtles in the morning. Keep in mind, at this point, we've only had one hour of sleep Along the way, we stopped for several toads. Got a Great Plains toad just hopping around here. See if I can get close enough. Doesn't want me to. It's making me look like a fool. We finally made it to our planned spot for looking for box turtles in the morning and had enough time for about one hour of sleep. Keep in mind, that only gave us two hours of sleep for the night. After our alarm went off, we began herping bright and early and immediately found our first herp of the morning, a desert box turtle. 
This is just what we were hoping to find. Conditions for finding box turtles are perfect right now. Let's go see if we can find some more. Oh, it looks like we may have found another one. Let's go take a look. Yep, here it is, our second desert box turtle. Let's go see if we can find another. Okay, looks like we got uh, another box turtle here on the left. There it is. Box turtles are protected throughout Arizona. It is believed that their populations have been in decline in many places during the past several decades. It's unfortunate that in response to this decline, our current game laws do not encourage the captive production of these turtles by willing private citizens, and we're forced to watch their populations in nature slowly decline without being able to maintain captive populations. Here's a sample of what desert box turtle habitat in Arizona often looks like. Desert box turtles spend the majority of their time throughout the year living underground in kangaroo rat burrows. They are primarily found during the summer monsoons as the rain triggers their surface activity. A bunch of uh, early birds this morning looking for critters. We all got our uh, bed heads, our hair from the wonderful sleep that we got last night. Hours. <laughs> Two good hours, right? But we're happy because we're finding we're finding box turtles and we're gonna find a hognose snake. After a couple of hours of unsuccessfully looking for hognose snakes, we stopped and cooked a quick bite to eat and then began heading westward for our afternoon and evening destinations. Driving through southern Arizona during the summer rainy season is a beautiful experience. The rains cause the wild grasses, flowers, trees, and other vegetation to come alive. The air is humid and cooler than usual. I love driving through these mountains and smelling the monsoons in the air and the oak trees as we drive or hike through. Many of the mountains in southern Arizona are encapsulated within the boundaries of the Coronado National Forest, named after the Spanish conquistador Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, who passed through the area in the 1500s. We decided to stop and take a break from sitting in the truck, and stretch and relax for a few minutes. I'm often reminded of the many times that I myself have explored the area during my lifetime and even the experiences that I first had of the area as a young boy living in Fort Huachuca. The beauty of the landscapes in this area is almost surreal. The vast mountains and undeveloped valleys are a sight to see. The kids found this praying mantis while they were looking around. After a short break, we decided to hike along a short trail to take in the scenery. Can't tell for sure, but it's probably a Sonoran spotted whiptail. Nature is simply amazing. We also were able to see what I believe are several elegant earless lizards. Here's a very young greater short-horned lizard that was spotted by Emmett and Olivia while we were hiking. This is a common horned lizard found throughout Arizona that can often be found in a large variety of elevations. The bulk of their diet, like many horned lizards, is ants. Olivia and Emmett stopped here to take a look at some tadpoles that were found in this roadside puddle. The summer rains and thunderstorms are a trigger for activity and breeding for many amphibian species in Arizona. These pools left by the rain are temporary, and some of our toad species lay egg masses that hatch within 24 hours, and the tadpoles may develop into little frogs within as little as 7 to 10 days.
All right, we are getting ready to uh, to herp again tonight, and we're gonna make a couple of guesses for the night to see uh, see who's right. Have a little fun. So one of the first things we're gonna do is uh, we're we're trying to guess how many other herpers, how many other cars of herpers we're gonna find tonight on this road. So any guesses? Olivia took mine, I was going to say three. Okay, so we got... Can we double up on it or... Yeah. Okay, three. Me and Olivia are on a team. Okay. And you, you said two? Yeah. Okay, I say, uh, I say four. Oh, wow. Okay, so those are those, those, are those guesses. Next guess is uh, how many other uh, sites are we going to see out there that have bug lights set up tonight? My, my guess is yeah. two. Two. One. None. One. I'm, 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 I think I want to go with two also. I'm going one. Okay. Two. I, I, Olivia, you're the traitor. You're leaving me. The last one is, uh, what does everyone think the first snake is Mountain we're going to find tonight? Mountain King Snake. Olivia, Mountain King Snake. Night Snake. Night Snake. Do you team up again, Jason? I, I wanted to say Mountain King Snake, but you, you left me with the, with the <laughs> one, so I'm not going to go with that one. Um, I'm gonna say we're gonna see a green rat snake. Green rat snake, wow. I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna say a black tailed rattlesnake. So alright, we got the night cut out for us, so we'll see what uh, see what happens. Okay, looks like we found our first snake of the evening, so it looks like we were all wrong. First snake is a tiger rattlesnake. Tiger rattlesnakes. Like all rattlesnakes, are venomous and appropriate care should be taken to prevent being bitten. Tiger rattlesnakes are not rare, but are less commonly seen. I would guess that I see one tiger rattlesnake for about every 20 to 30 western diamondback rattlesnakes that I see, as a rough estimate. They're quite variable in their appearance and are often confused with the speckled rattlesnake. Okay, we found a little uh, couch's spade foot toad here. is. Here's another couch of spade foot. I think this one's a little prettier. I like this one. Here's a centipede that the kids found out crawling around in the grass. I'm not sure what kind it is, but it was several inches in length. Okay, we found, uh, found this night snake. This particular night snake is a hooded night snake, which is much less widespread in Arizona than the desert night snake, being restricted to the extreme southern portions of Arizona. This is a welcome find for us tonight. Night snakes, as the name implies, are most often encountered at night. They can be a reliable snake to see while out herping in many parts of Arizona. Okay, we found our first narrow mouth toad here in Arizona. So this was, uh, this somebody else, another herper was, I guess, kind of in the area and they saw one and we were just, just looking all over trying to find one. And finally we came across this one. Actually, the dog is what helped us find it. So this is awesome. This is a first, uh, first for all of us. The Mazatlan narrow mouth toad, formerly known as the Great Plains narrow mouth toad in Arizona, is one of Arizona's smallest toads. It's secretive and not commonly found. I've found narrowmouth toads in other states before, but this is the first time that I've found a narrowmouth toad in Arizona. It has a very unique appearance that easily sets it apart from other toads. That was cool. So that was awesome, that narrowmouth toad. I've been wanting to find one of those for a long time. And so this was it was really, really cool to find that. So it's been pretty awesome. One of the things that I've learned about Arizona herping is that you never know what you're going to find. Just like this beetle that we saw the following morning, you just have to keep working and don't give up. As the saying goes, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more of it that I have. That hard work paid off for us again as we unexpectedly came across this Sonoran Desert Tortoise. 
This encounter was lucky for us, but it was also lucky for the tortoise as well, as it could have easily become killed by an oncoming car if we weren't there to alert other drivers as it crossed the highway. One thing that has always bugged me about herpetological literature is how negative it is to those who herp or collect reptiles. The authors of these books and studies only see the negative aspects of those who herp in the field. They seem to always ignore the good that happens, such as when herpers safely escort wildlife across dangerous highways. If we hadn't been here today, this tortoise might not have survived. Desert tortoises are protected throughout Arizona and should never be handled or collected. All right, we're uh, we're driving driving back home through the rain right now, so uh, we're just gonna chit chat a little bit about uh, our our predictions from last night. How did we do? Who was right? Who was wrong? No one got up right. So so how about the first? Let, let, let's hit the first one. So one of the predictions was how many bug lights were we gonna see set up along along the road? Yep, we didn't find any of them. So yes, Emmett, you were right. The rest of us, we were wrong. I think I predicted. Uh, I think I predicted two. Well, that's the rest of you I guys. I think I said two. I said one. Okay. I was gonna do zero. But... We didn't find any. Uh, all right, on to prediction number two. One of the predictions was uh, what was going to be the first snake we were gonna see that night. So we did find a tiger rattlesnake first. Did any of us guess tiger rattlesnake? Nope. No, no. We all failed that one. Well, all of us failed that one. one was uh, night snake, and I got that right. That's right. Emmett guessed night snake as the first snake that we would find. And the third one we didn't get on video. <laughs> Not a way too fast. All right. Um, what about? What was, our, what was our last prediction again? How many other herpers would we oh, see? Yeah. Oh yeah, the, so that prediction was how many other herpers were we going to see that we night? Five. No, we found four. Four. Oh, yeah. We ended up finding four. four. And uh, who guessed four? You. Yeah, I just wanted to hear you all say that. Can you say that one more time? Yeah. No, me. <laughs> well, let's revisit our trip and see how we did. At the beginning of the video, our goal was to find a box turtle, a hognose snake or a green rat snake. We ended up finding three box turtles, no hognose snakes, and no green rat snakes. That being said, we did unintentionally and unexpectedly find our first Mazatlan narrowmouth toad and a Sonoran desert tortoise. Not bad. And now it's time for the answer to our herping factoid. If you guessed C, you were right. The photograph of this skin is from a western diamondback rattlesnake. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel so that you can come along with us for more of our adventures. Please also share this video with those that you think might be interested. Unfortunately, We've now come to the end of our adventure. Please join us again on a future episode of Sonoran Herping Adventures. <laughs>